right, welcome back to Lenfin's Cocktails. Today we're gonna make one of my absolute favorite things to make. We're gonna make this nice block of clear ice. Making a large block of clear ice might seem unimportant, but it does have some benefits. One, it looks great in a glass, but that's not the only thing that's important. It also helps to keep the drink colder longer without diluting it. In order to do that, we're gonna need a few tools. I use a Coleman five quart ice chest, nothing special about it just a basic ice chest. It, it really is the perfect size to make it in your freezer at home. I use a small ice saw, some type of strong fixed blade knife, and a light rubber mallet. And finally, you'll just need some basic tap water. So let's talk about the process. Why does this work? Using the small ice chest like this, we can make clear ice because the way it works, it's called directional freezing. Because all these sides are insulated, the water will freeze from the top down, pushing all the impurities of the water further down into the bottom. It'll create a space where the water sits and all the nice clear ice will be on top, as you'll see later when we make this. Anyway, it pushes all those impurities down. You don't have to use any type of fancy, special, purified, filtered spring water. Any tap water will do. The reason that it creates the clear ice is because a lot of what you see in ice is either impurities in the water or air bubbles which create little pockets and kind of cloud up the ice. But by using directional freezing and pushing it all down into the pocket at the bottom, you'll end up with a nice block of clear ice on top. So let's go ahead and get started and take our water and pour it on into the ice chest. When you put your water in, you, you don't really need to fill it all the way up to the edge. You don't want it to freeze over or spill anything. Give yourself a good inch, inch and a half from the top and then put it in your freezer. How long you leave it on the, in the freezer really depends on your particular freezer, so you might have to try it a couple times before you get it right. For my freezer, it gets really cold in there, so about 12 hours will give me a good two to three inches of frozen block. At my old apartment, I needed about 24 hours to get enough ice to really make it freeze over, but that's kind of subjective to your freezer. So I started one yesterday, and we're gonna pull that out now and start cutting it up. There's a lot of ice forming up top, and we just wanna wash that away. So we'll just kind of take a kind of take a little spatula here and brush that away. We don't really need that. Then what we'll have to do is we'll have to flip it over and we're gonna run hot water over the top and that's gonna loosen it from the ice chest so that the ice will just slide right out. So let's try to do that now. So as I said, we're gonna put this in our sink and just run some hot water over it gently. I would keep your fingers underneath the ledge right here so you can feel when the ice drops out. You really want to make sure you get water all over the bottom. It will gradually start to loosen up. Now, as you can see, now it's free. We're gonna move back over to the main counter and start to carve this up. Now that we've run the hot water over it, we can go ahead and dump it out. Now, as you can see, it's frozen to about here and there's the giant area on top that's full of the water and there's a, a nice frozen section which is where our clear ice is gonna come from. So you can see the line here and all of this is filled with water. So I'm gonna take the end of my knife, I'm gonna puncture this and then water is gonna flow out everywhere. So I'm gonna quickly do this over the sink. Okay, so now, I punctured a little hole, I've drained all the water, and you can see where this big water bubble was. So now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna chop all of this off, and we're gonna be left with a nice block which we can start making our ice cubes with. And the way I generally like to start with that is to take the back of my knife and really just start breaking all this thin ice out. I should say, again, be really careful because you are messing with the knife here, lots of sharp objects, it's slippery, things can go wrong. Make sure to pick a knife with a really grippy handle so you know you're gonna keep a grip on it while you're working on it, because you really don't wanna cut yourself. And start working on trimming down the ice until we get our one nice pretty block. Yeah, so we're gonna start cutting this down. And I like to just take my knife and just start breaking through it just like that. Just push down gently, make sure your, hand, your other hands are clear. Don't cut yourself, please. And just start chopping away the large bits of thin ice. I like to save these big chunks for mixing. They break apart really easy in the mixing glass and help with the dilution a little quicker. And it's just, you know, why not? It's nice, clean ice. So we'll continue cutting this down. You can kind of see it does break off really easy and cut away, which is really handy.
And now we're left with a really nice chunk of ice that we can make large clear squares with or small, whatever we really need to do. Gotta clean up a little bit in between because it does get really messy if you're doing this over the counter. I usually do it around the sink, but that's really hard for videoing. So I'm doing it here and dealing with the extra mess. So now that we've got our nice clear block of ice, now it's time to cut it up into our small blocks. I'm gonna show you the two ways that I prefer to do it. We're gonna take our saw and we're gonna score it. Making sure to get some nice, not too deep, but deep enough cuts to make it easier for it to, to uh, slice through when we go to tap it. And we do wanna score all sides. Hopefully you can get some good straight lines all the way across. The better you score it, the easier it's gonna come time when you go to tap it. There we go. Now let's just go ahead and give that a light tap. Perfect. And here we go, a nice big rock of ice. Now I wanna show the other way I like to do this sometimes, which is to saw directly through and cut all the way down. It does take a little bit longer than the tapping method, but sometimes if there's some faults in there, it'll help prevent losing the entire batch of ice. So let's just go ahead and do it that way. When the ice is tempered, you really can't do it this way because too much of the of the frozen stuff will get in the teeth of the knife, but if it's, a, if it's pretty cold, you can still do it. Now, if we take that and put it on its side, you can see where I've cut a good distance through it already, all the way to about halfway. Now what we can do is we can just cut straight from the top and create one big chunk of ice that way. There we go, now we're left with a different way to cut the ice. The cuts are a lot sharper on the side, not so rounded, if that matters to you. It's just another way to do it if you don't like the tapping method or you find that's not reliable enough for you. So another cool thing you can do with big chunks of ice like this is you can do a nice gem cut. So in order to do that, we just cut on an angle our sides like that. So you can see I've kind of made an octagon now. Yeah, then we just cut the top edges. Kind of clean up that top a little bit, there we go. Now we've got a nice gem cut. And the advantage of that is, not only does it look nice and have a good presentation, it's a lot easier to fit into your rocks glass. Thanks for joining us today, making some nice clear ice, which will help your cocktails look better and stay colder longer without diluting the drink that you worked so hard to make. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Try this method at home, leave me a message in the comments, let me know what you think. Were you successful? Did it turn out as easy as you thought it would? Thanks and have a great day.